lot of police uniforms anywhere. This is like one of no police officers is one of them. Yeah. Jordan Peters and Zell Pond. No <laughs> Not a one. They will walk they walk by him consistently. It's a cop free zone. Everybody, if you're watching, come to 201 Poplar. Somebody bring me some refill. I'm out of weed. <laughs> They're pee peeping um, out the corner down there going, is he gone? Yeah. Is he gone? Dear Jesus, pieces. I'm losing my audience here. I'm losing my light. I'm going to have to take a lunch break. That's what they do. Um, I don't I want to stay here. here. Sit down. I am going to have to flop out right here. I'm too old to get arrested. Oh, wow. oh, that other girl that I had to wait all this time to go to prison. Now they make me wait all this time to get arrested. You know, the service in this town, the next time I get busted, I'm taking my business to another town. Because the treatment I'm getting here, after being such a frequent player, is really disgraceful. It's insulting. I'm the king of the Peters. My accommodation should be waiting for me upstairs. But no, they don't want me. Well, there's not a cop. Look, they have been called off. I want you to continue to wait and see which the next time you see a cop. No, they're nowhere. Oh, thankfully. Now watch this. Get the camera on that. I am unarmed, but I am selling cannabis. In what city can you do that? Where can you do that? Where else can you do that? Offer pot for sale and have the police walk by. You the sheeple, that's UEWE the sheeple. Continue to flock dirt. Quactivist ideologies. To inform your more imperfect moron majority. To, to, and there's that's for disabilitude. And justice toward none without a hint of audacity. Look out, I might launch into a scatological alphabet. It's good. But to see, you know, the other thing that's starting to factor in is this lack of There. <laughs> Welcome to the cannabis exchange. Shelby County's first cannabis. Will you please now report this? Is now look where we're recording this is from. Shelby County's first cannabis right, exchange. the criminal center. I don't care if you got it. I don't care if your little girl with seizures or dying. This is what I call prime real estate. This is prime real estate. multi-talented. I just don't remember what those talents might be. Not a uniform in sight. Not one police uniform anywhere in sight. He's been offering to sell cannabis. Not one uniform in sight. They've walked by him as he's offered them cannabis for sale. Not one officer's uniform to be seen. There's an officer. There we go. Another one here. Another pass. No one, no one, the magic trick, yeah. I think it comes to disappear. Oh, well, I deal pot. There goes another one. It's an amazing trick. Watch this. There's another one. Man, suddenly no cops, huh? <laughs> okay. Never 
chance of confidence doubt. disappearing. No, men's right. It works. They'll be back. We just won't see them. No, they all come in the windows. I really doubt they're doing fights. Don't go near there. Cannabis. <laughs> yes. So much better than I thought it was going to be. Quality time with you. <laughs> Quality time with most of the police officers in the building. Yeah. Not Begley, Sergeant. I am dealing cannabis. I turn myself into you as the leader of the movement against the tyranny of prohibition. Gives a pass. Walks on by. Sure, Sergeant. Go back. Maybe they're going to get the sheriff. Bill Oldham was also one of those who was there at the 420 Friendly Nightclub. You know who was there? You had Bill Gibbons, who was DA, who became Homeland Security Commissioner. You had Mark Luttrell, who was Sheriff, who became Mayor. You had Larry Godwin, who was your Director, Police Director, who became Assistant Homeland Security Director. Bill Oldham, who became Sheriff. Executive ADA Wiring, who became DA by DA Manager. I've done a great thing. like a lawyer at the She is apparently, I think I was photoshopped into some of those pictures, but I can't say I spoke weak. And so she's the DA, and her hench boy, Judge J. Robert Carter Jr. is well my judge yet again. What are the odds? I'd say pretty much 100%. When you judge shot me for three years and 23 days, pretty soon, considering all the other judges that would have to recuse themselves, you're kind of left with Carter. I'm dealing pot here. <laughs> what if you dealt pot in front of the police station and no one cared? <laughs> I'm starting to get a complex. You know, I was just up in the hall the other day having a conversation with Judge J. Robert Carter Jr. And we were just saying, he sees me. He looks in the glass and goes, hey, it's the kingpin. And I said, hey, it's the kindest, wisest, handsomest judge in the history of judges. And Judge Roy Bean, nothing on you, pal. And we're convincing like human beings, you know, as if he wasn't a servant of the evil empire, who was a bloodsucker and a pissant, who thrived on humanity for his half million dollar a year job. And we were having a good time, and I brought up the Dred Scott decision. Where a Negro said, hey, you can manumit me, aha, you can manumit me, because I've been to a free state. So I'm going to ask Judge J. Robert Carter Jr., wait for it, to manumit me, because I've been to California. I've been to a free state. Uh, nose weeks can be free somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm pulling out Dred Scott on him. I'm pulling out every time everybody anywhere has ever stood up and said, give us us free. For the first time in human history, one individual is standing up to represent all individuals with the lawful offensive of no one's rank. I declare that I am the law. I now represent connecting with every person on the earth. You cannot line up and sign up and represent me. You must declare yourself to the entity. You just grab your heart and say, I am the law. There's no men's rank. Everybody can put your hand over your heart and declare your individuality. But what you cannot do is put your hand over somebody else's heart. And that's called the trumping. <laughs> See? You're, you come up and grab your own crotch and say, I am the law, but you can't walk up to others and say, it's okay, I am the law. <laughs> we learned say? that from Donald Trump. Now, when they enjoy it, it's called a kingpinning. <laughs> I am the law. Now, you can't just make a rule because Donald Trump messed it up for everybody. No more grabbing anyone between the legs. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to decide for yourself. With rights come responsibility. The individual will have all the rights they can take responsibility for. Well, I'm taking responsibility for my rights by not violating anybody else's rights. Yet I'm going to prison as a violent offender who committed no act of, you know, violence, violence, and no crime, crime. I committed a victimless crime. Well, I didn't actually commit it. I committed it in essence de facto. And I wasn't in possession of a gun during the commission of a firearm. I was in constructive possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. What felony? Commission. What? It was in somebody else's house 20 feet away from me. But even though these guns were thrown out, the injustice allowed the jury to use the guns against me. They would not follow the law that says, I am the law. There's no mens rea. So since they wanted to use the erroneous guns against me, I came here today to deal pot to prove they will not take me to jury trial. And look what I proved, they won't even arrest me. You know, when I was in Hollywood, they said, you can't get arrested in this town. Now they're saying it to me here again. Now I'm seeing it. It's like, wow, you know, Johnny Carson never called and neither the Shelby County Sheriff's Department. Hey, hey, I don't know anybody who's standing over there. I am the law, no men's right. If you're a lawyer and you don't say that, 
you are supporting the violation against humanity of prohibition. One of them you sneaking away. You have the lawful responsibility to follow the law. And the law reads actus reus non fest and reum nisi mensi rea. For the act to be guilty, the mind must also be guilty. And for the mind to be guilty, the act must be criminal. And a crime is an overt act with the intent to do harm to a person, property, or puppy. Well, I didn't have the intent to do harm because, in fact, no harm was committed. Hello? No name on your affidavit means you're not a criminal. It means the ministers of injustice are perpetrating the crime of prohibition. From the first individual thrown into the volcanoes to appease the angry gods, through crusades and inquisitions, slavery and apartheid, women's suffrage, Jim Crow, gay bashing, the war on drugs, it has all been the same prohibition. And it must end in all forms. Open up the floodgates and let everybody out who has no name of a victim on their affidavit. Now, how hard is that? In essence, de facto, means it did not happen. They merely said that it did. They are comfortable declaring that two people committing a pill can be branded a criminal or a customer. Two people taking a pill, one is branded a criminal, the other a customer. This is what your medicalized marijuana wants to do. To brand one a criminal and the other a customer for committing the same act. But the law says the act must be guilty. So if you do it and it's not guilty, how the hell is it guilty when I do it? The answer is legislation. The legislation that told the Negro that could not sit at the front of the bus, that they were the criminal, while the white person could sit at the front of the bus as a customer. We cannot allow a Jim Crow system of cannabis to exist with your medicalized marijuana for some. means others will not have any. These governors are perfectly fine with the idea of saying that practically everybody will be represented. What does practically everybody mean? That means some people will not be represented. We must never allow a system that allows some to be represented. I am the law. It represents everybody because you are an individual. Find your individuality. Find the content of character to express your individuality, to do as you will to yourself and with others who wish to enjoy in consensual adult behavior, whatever that might be. And all over the place there are people fighting legislation for the freedom that we have. It's only legislation away from being taken away because it's not freedom. It's legislation. No legislation has ever set us free. Not from the Declaration of Independence that declared all men are created equal. No women, no slaves, no Indians. All men. Sail away. Well, that would be ghosts, just all men, you know. You know what we mean. To a constitution that declared the Negroes would be seen as three-fifths of a human once these abolitionist slaveholders ended slavery on their deathbed, not the day before. This is the convoluted system. There needed to be no emancipation proclamation to set a human being free. It was misprisoned. They were being imprisoned for having black skin. It's always been prohibition. With these acts that declare that the Racial Integrity Act of 1924 and the Racial Integrity Act of 19, Civil Rights Bill of 1964 meant nothing until Loving v. Virginia went to court and declared that they had the right as individuals, as an individual, not waiting for legislation or a vote, to declare that as a white man and a black woman they had every right to be married. What was the act of getting married? Some can do it, others cannot. How can that be? always the same. Legislation, because legislation decrees that prohibition is lawful because they have the right to deny your humanity. So you must never allow them to deny your humanity by standing up and saying, I am the law. You say it for everybody on the earth, not just for yourself. This is what we can all stand under, one banner, not medical marijuana, 14 grams of weed or less. Well, I'm good now, except I'm dealing You know the criminal. So, well, where you go? Hey, it's a decrim, Bill. I'll tell you what, they'll go easy on you. Just tell us who your scumbag dealer is. So Ozzy and Harriet go free, and uh, Reggie and JJ go to jail, and Julio goes to prison. That's their version of your medicalized marijuana. Your medicalized marijuana will come here to Tennessee. One guess will be the first people that will not be able to get a job in that industry. Go ahead and guess, my brother. You're going to tell me right off the top who it is. It's going to be them. 
because not because we're discriminating, but you've all got criminal records for it. You guessed it. We yeah, one of these. yeah, slinging and dealing. They executed my pot dealer man, Gregory Brian Johnson, hot dog. Said that he had a gun under the seat. They just opened fire on him. He wasn't trying to shoot nobody. Dallas is a good dude, a good family man. Been in my home. He's not to have a gun. His neighborhood was his gun. But when you're tainted with drugs, you're a scumbag. So nobody cares. That's all they need to do to taint you. Is the specter of drugs. It dehumanizes you. It allows them to say that you don't count as much as others who follow the system. If you don't pay your fees to the system, there will be fines. You can have your medical marijuana. Just go to a doctor. And then go pay your sin tax and your gouge prices. Well, man, broke folk in the hood when I was dealing with coming to me with five dollars and some of it was changed. How long do you think they're going to wait to save up for that medical bill? How long do you think that they're going to go then and have to pay all that extra money when they go to the dude on the corner and get it for way cheaper? How long do you think that's going to be? And so what you have now is a system where the white people will go get a license and the wealthy and affluent will go get licenses and the people in the hood will still go to jail for buying it illegally. I was selling cannabis cheaper here in Memphis that was being brought to me from California than they were just selling it for the dispensaries in California. How can that be? They cheer for this system where all this tax money comes along and builds them up some tax money, but it's made on sin tax revenue. And what do they do with that money? They use it for more police to be on Craigslist looking for prostitutes. They use it to go down to the strip club. They're so proud of their millions of dollars worth of strip club probe to find out what everybody else found out with the $40. Naughty girls do naughty things for money in the dark corners of the club. And the bastions of the media who stand against the strip clubs denounce it at every turn. The commercial appeal for one. And then you open up the middle and it's all filled with nothing but ads for the strip clubs. I love the hypocrisy. It's what keeps the world going. So I stand up for all people. All people for the first time in humanity. It's everybody everywhere. Even the people that disagree and they hate me or whatever they judge J. Robert Carter Jr., you and everybody else. Whatever it is you're doing, have at it. Don't look over your shoulder until somebody yells, stop. Help police. And now I stand out here to make the, the dramatic point. How riddle me this? You and the media are now charged with this never sees the light of day. <laughs> but how would you now reconcile the fact they're not arresting me? Who could have imagined that we would say that? I was in development, but here we still remain. There is not a cop in sight. There's not even a cop coming out the door. What are we doing here? Why am I still here? I, I, if I was a taxpayer in this town, I gotta tell you, I'd be outraged. I really would, actually. You know, because this is outrageous. Help! I'm dealing weed! Is that Leslie Ballin? So. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> Leslie Ballin, no, I know why well, I'm going. I guess it's more of a cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bring weed. They I won't be on that. film with you. They love you, but they won't be on film. They won't yeah, Ballin, be. Ballin, and blow. Man, see, I've listened to these charlatans when I've been there. Hey, if you got ten thousand dollars, I can get you off. You got five thousand dollars, I'll get you probation. And for two thousand dollars, you're gonna do some time. Less than that, we're not even having this conversation. You know, oh, this is Scott Hall. <laughs> and that's who I'd call Scott Free. For those of you watching, now time to do a promo. Scott Free. They were out here earlier. The lawyers are out here. They dig it. I was asking one lawyer. I said, "What's your favorite video?" And he said, "Man, I love that video when you were smoking pot over here in front of the court." I said, I love the one where you're smoking the blood this morning when you're driving into court. How do I get up to court to expose this no man's right? They wanted to remand me for the blood that they didn't have in evidence. So I said, why aren't you arresting me if it's a crime? At the trial of the millennium, I wanted to produce a video of me holding a quarter pound of weed that morning and say, this, now I can prove it. What crime could I commit on video that you wouldn't arrest me for? So there I am holding the jar of weed. They won't allow it in as evidence. Why wouldn't you jump for joy to get that evidence? Here you are charged with rape, Your Honor, and we have a video of the guy committing a rape. That's like, wow, this is like fantastic. Why didn't you want the video of me smoking, of, of holding the weed? Because you know it, you can't arrest me. Oh, you can remand me, but you can't arrest me. Because of 
no mens re. I am the law. You have to go to lawyers and say, what about no mens re and watch what they're going to do. <laughs> they put their hands up like in defense. No, no. Do we have legislation that insulates us from our inhumanity? I'm just following orders, Adolf. And it's the same as it's always been, the Nuremberg defense. And I stand up to them. Are you, do you have the capacity to arrest somebody? She's got a gun. Just keep watching. A lot of people walk by with guns. Got to be 25 or more by now. Cannabis! I could use it as a murderer, but not as a pothead. Oh, so I say, where is the victim? They say they don't have to produce a victim. Well, in the case of Colorado versus Kobe Bean Bryant, an NBA Hall of Famer and sodomizing rapist, they could not proceed without their victim. How come you can proceed against a pothead? Why don't potheads have the same rights as murdering rapists? arrest here. It's like with the Walenda thing. I was so pissed off when he didn't fall to his death. I wanted it to be a clear message to the next idiot that wanted to walk across a pole across the Grand Canyon. You see that? We're losing our light. We're losing our mojo. I did my part. I made my... What's that? Oh, okay. Maybe a different look. Okay, we're taking a break for a second. Can somebody battery? We'll be back. Unknown talent, they'd like to share with us now. No, that's not one of them. <laughs> 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 I'm not brother. I'm not brother. I'm not brother. I'm not brother. I
second time. I will try it. Okay. Oh, All right. Camera, right. yeah, right, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was double blunted when we got here, but I'm kind of done now. This. Yeah, put this to music. It's going to go wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Why are we going to play this? They're making it at a clinic.
bag split it up. 50 cents. <laughs> down to the nub here. I'm doing all I can. Craigslist on the whore page, that's where they are, they're trolling over there, <laughs> trying to find, pretending they're prostitutes, or looking for prostitutes. Let's get them moving and handing them out. Coley, let's, come do, here. let's do come freedom here. band hands out. We have I'll to do something it. here. Not a, no police pictures. anywhere. We can't I find a uniform. Oh, the donut shop. Uh, uh, they're all inside. Hi. Countdowns, this will be the day, though this will be the day over three years. It never happens. Now, this has to be the day. I just thought I'd stop by, pick up a quick bus, get upstairs, you know. But no, they're not going to let me deal weed out here. Uh, on for sale. All of it on the radio. One day, this test will be over. No more standing there with your genitalia in your hands to get a job. That is what your war on drugs looks like. Say no to drugs, one pop. Lock him up. It would have been me. He would have hopped out quick as day. He would have hopped out quick as day. It would have been me with that sack, right? Hey, you know where you at, boy? Bring your time, bro. Anybody still out there? Hello, Freedom Casters. Who knew we'd still be here? Everybody's like, God, oh, go to prison already, will you? Yeah, everybody's all being right. Lock him up! 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 Lock him up. Oh, man. Yeah. You're 
sending me what a display. For those of you tuning in at home, any questions? Anybody out there? I'm here for all of you. All my dedicated supplicants. So that they were not going to take me away and leave me standing up there hanging. I was going to come down here and make our case so now you can see it. That there's no men's right for doing nothing to no one because, well, over here, that they're not arresting me. That's how you know. You're seeing it with your own two eyes. I'm not standing out here calling for medicalizing or decriminalizing or legalizing or recreationalizing or any other kind of We have another officer coming, we're getting another chance. This could be the one. The only guy with no stripes, he needs a promotion, this could be it. This is your big chance. Don't get your promotion. Yeah. You just can't get some people promoted. Don't get your promotion, man. Well, I've gotten a few. I got Deputy Gary Peel. I'm going to take his rank away from him again. The greatest gambling story ever. One of the great moments up there is when the deputies were laughing about that story. The only one who covered that story, by the way, Jim Gibson, the deputy that was laughing about that story. The only one who covered that story, by the way, Jim I have read to you the reports from the Shelby County Sheriff's Office from my club, from the Shelby County Sheriff's Office in this case, all declaring that they witnessed this criminal activity go on and took no action. And once again, you see them here, witnessing this criminal activity right in their faces. I'm one exhale away from having cops start blowing drug tests, and they will not arrest me. For the simple fact, there is no men's ray. When you stand up for your rights, all of you watching this, when you see those sheeple out there denounce me and say the no men's ray way didn't work, really? Well, look at me now. Not a cop in sight. And, 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 and hey, you were the cop at. <laughs> the and first hey, look at real time crimes. Cannabis for sale. Got big time cannabis for sale. Kingpin Thorne Peters. You guys announced that nut job Brits Mongo is the Prince. I stand up for all humanity as the Kingpin Thorne Peters. It's time to be the first to say it's time to get it straight for history. I represent all people at all time. I am not an immigrant. That's why I'm a major immigrant. And as soon as everybody else declares their Watching the smoke pot all the 
time. They arrested me for running a front to drug trafficking. calling it in. Mr. Soundbite. We have a report. They're calling it in. People are viewing. They're calling it in. You're out there. As soon as they hear it to you, they're hanging up. 1-0-1-2-2-2-1-3-0-0. The Office of the District Attorney General of Shelby County. Amy Weirich, my DA In spite of all those pictures you may or may not be seeing of us in my on my website, we're not that close. <laughs> You don't have to be close to do all that. You just so call her up 901-222-1300. Tell her the kingpin is on the move again. Come and rest him. 901, call in. Let's get those phone calls. Everybody call in. We've got a phone down here. Call in. Can't get arrested here. I did my part. I'm doing my part. I have tried to be as entertaining as I can for as long as I can. <laughs> I spent, uh, too much time. This this building is filled with hundreds of officers. Finally. 
All right, step aside. We might be having our moment. Everybody, get ready. We have my yellow paper. We have people calling. Here we go. We got officers on the scene. Okay, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, but for something else, again, they won't meet cannabis. Very they appear. will not meet cannabis. Failure to appear. Didn't mention a word about the cannabis. They are. Okay, so he got his wish. He has now been taken into custody, but this was for failure to appear. So now we'll take it up to the floor where J. Robert Carter Jr. is. And we'll go up there and we will walk around with our buttons on and we will make it known that there is no mens re for any cannabis use. Stay tuned. Update later. Thanks.